the Pharaoh Shuffle. Let's go. All right, so what is the Pharaoh Shuffle? Well, it's kind of like a regular, you know, a Riffle Shuffle, but it's a little bit different, and this is how it differs from that. So what it is, you have a shuffle like this, but really it's a perfect weave of all the cards just like that. One by one, you can see that they're perfectly interwoven, one by one, and that is a Pharaoh Shuffle. So why should you learn the Pharaoh Shuffle? Well, you don't have to, and uh, the reason why a lot of people use the Pharaoh Shuffle is because it has a lot of advantages for tricks that can't be accomplished without the use of the perfectly interwoven uh, cards. So for example, if I had a deck set up like this, uh, separated from reds and blacks, and I did a Pharaoh Shuffle, let me see if I can get a perfect one on camera for you right now, did a perfect Pharaoh Shuffle like this, what I have now is obviously a deck that's, uh, you know, all red, black, red, black, red, black, perfectly. So now if I had the participant do a regular riffle shuffle like this, the best they can, it can even be sloppy. It doesn't matter how the cards go. Now this deck is ready to go for any trick using the Gilbreth principle. And I'll be teaching you about the Gilbreth principle and many other things you can do with the Pharaoh Shovel. But for now, we will just get down to the bare bones of this move and teach you some tips that'll make it a lot easier for you to do. Because I'm telling you guys, there are thousands of tricks, hundreds of thousands of tricks you can do using the Pharaoh Shuffle. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this video right now is because I wanna go into all these tricks you can do, miracles you can do with this little shuffle. So for now, we will just talk about the grip and how you should hold the cards for this shuffle, all right? So what we wanna do is basically hold the cards in a straddle grip. What that is, uh, you're holding all fingers up like this, holding the deck. Now your pinky wants to go on the back of the cards, your index wants to go on the front, and your two middle fingers, your ring and your index, or I'm sorry, your ring and your middle finger are going on the side, and your thumb is going on the other side like this. So you're in a sort of straddle grip position. Now you wanna come over, and it's okay to move your pinky, this is just how I do it. I mean, you can move your pinky just so you can, this hand can come over, and it sort of mirrors the action of this hand. It goes over top like this, so both thumbs are sort of touching like this, all right? So you wanna come down, so the fingers are on this side touching these fingers, and the thumb is on the side touching this thumb. Now what you wanna do is split the pack like this, and don't worry for now how many cards are in both packets, all right? So all you wanna do is get this grip down and split the packet like this, opening like a book with both thumbs. And that is the start of a Pharaoh Shuffle. So you're halfway there. Now, normally when you do a Pharaoh Shuffle, it would be uh, split in half perfectly, 26 and 26. And the good way to tell is if uh, you, you know, sort of butt them together and uh, the thickness is the same. You can tell that they are uh, the right amount and they match up perfectly. When you uh, do this, you can see that uh, there are just the same amount of cards. But like I said, don't worry about that right now because that takes practice. For now, we're just going to worry about uh, the weaving part of the shuffle itself, all right? So, which is probably the hardest part of this move. All right, so what you're going to do is, like I said, don't worry about how many cards are in which, each packet. And all you're going to do now is you want to sort of tap the ends of the cards like this to make sure they are square. That's very important for the shuffle to work properly. And you'll notice that my index finger is sort of touching the top uh, top edge of this, of this packet. Now what you're gonna do is tap the edges like this, like I said. Now the way you position the packets is uh, you wanna angle them so you're looking at a V shape from your uh, perspective, okay? Now also, with that V shape, you also want to sort of angle the, the packets down so you're making sort of a tent. You're looking at a tent right now, like a little, like a roof of a house, maybe. And then from also, you're making a V shape so you can see here uh, with the uh, short edges of the cards and bending down so you're looking at also at a house, okay? So you got a V shape house. So once you break the deck apart like this, uh, the top half moves back, you tap the edges, you are looking at the V shape like this, and you uh, sort of tilt the, tilt the packets down like this. And then now what you wanna do is this index finger sort of uh, presses down right here, right in the middle where they meet, uh, right in the corner. The reason why you wanna do that is so 
the packet can the packets can stay flat. If you didn't do that, you can see that they sort of start to bow, and you don't want that because that can cause cards to not you know weave perfectly. So you want to take that index finger and really push down on those packets on the corner there with your right here. So for the weave itself, now what you're gonna do is like I said, do the do the split, move the top packet back, do the tap. All right, make your V shape like this. The hands tilt down, or the packets tilt down, so you're looking at sort of a roof of a house. Now, up until this point, you have a sort of a tight grip on the cards, and to make the weave happen, it's you might think it's a push, but it's not really a push. It's sort of just relaxing your hands. And don't get me wrong, there was a little bit of a push, but it's very, very light and relaxed. I mean, you're not, you're not jamming them in there. A lot of people think that you just sort of have to, you know, push hard and jam in there. That's not the case at all. And that's the wrong way to do it. And that's why I'm teaching you this method, all right? So it's very, very easy. All you gotta do is, like I said, push down with the index finger on that on those corners there and sort of hold a tight grip in this position. Now just relax your hands. Take that finger away. The index finger moves away and you just relax everything. Just relax your hands. With a little slight push, you're not trying to force it and it'll just happen. Think of it as sort of you're just guiding the packet in rather than trying to force it in, all right? So uh, we'll do it one more time. Split the packet, do the tap, uh, get, in, get into position with your index finger there, sort of a tight grip. Take the finger away and just relax the fingers and it'll happen automatically. All right, so. So the best uh, deck to use for a Pharaoh Shuffle is just a standard deck of bicycle cards because they are traditionally cut. What that means is though just the way they cut the cards off the press or off the you know uncut sheet allows you to shuffle from the bottom up, right? So you can see I'm starting from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> now we start from the bottom and you can see that it goes from the bottom up with the shuffle, all right? So that means they are traditionally cut. Now, if you have a different deck, some decks, uh, you know, especially newer decks, uh, they are not traditionally cut because uh, you just have to do a Pharaoh test uh, whether or not the cards are easier to shuffle from bottom up, which in this case, this one's not. This is the Smoke and Mirrors by Dan and Dave. And this one, you want to test if it shuffles either from top down or bottom up. In this case, they shuffle from top down. It's just easier to just go in. Uh, you, you can't explain it, but you'll notice a uh, different feel of whether the, it's easier to go from the bottom up or the, from the top down. But just to stay consistent, always use just a standard bicycle deck uh, for your Ferro Shuffle work, or you can get the Elite Edition bicycle cards from Penguin.com. Very smooth, uh, you know, great cards to work with. Uh, crush stock, they feel amazing, they fare real amazing. And you know, some uh, standard bikes, uh, they come kind of rough, but these elite edition cards I find uh, fare real very nicely, uh, like butter. No, I know some of you guys are screaming at me right now, what about the Richard Turners? You're right. Uh, the uh, the gold standards by Richard Turner are also amazing to fare shuffle with. However, they, uh, for me, um, I, I kind of prefer the Elite Edition. I mean, for me, these are kind of thick also. I don't know, they're just not as smooth for me. Uh, it's just a matter of your preference and, and uh, what you like and how you and how you uh, prefer your, uh, your card stock. I don't know, it's just a matter of preference. Now, there are two types of Pharaoh Shuffle, actually, uh, and they accomplish different things. One is called the In Pharaoh Shuffle, and one is called the Out Pharaoh Shuffle. And sometimes that can get confusing, so let me just break it down for you and make it as easy as possible for you to remember, all right? So all an in Pharaoh Shuffle is, is when you do your cut, the bottom card, all right, the bottom card goes inside of the top packet. What that means, you can see the seven of spades right there. If I do the Pharaoh Shuffle like this, you can see now that the Pharaoh, or I'm sorry, you can see now that the seven of spades is going inside of the top packet. All right, what an out Pharaoh shuffle is, we can see the five of clubs. If I do the uh, the shuffle here, an out Pharaoh shuffle is where the bottom card stays on the outside. All right, so when I close it up, it's still on the outside of the deck. So in shuffle, bottom card goes in, out shuffle, bottom card stays out. Sometimes, uh, like I said, that gliding technique or the, the guiding uh, rather than pushing, what you want to do is as soon as you start to get the weave, uh, what you can do is sort of like 
move this packet away from you also, all right? So it sort of moves, for me as clockwise, for you as counterclockwise because you're probably right-handed. All right, so just move this packet, uh, you know, palm out, and then you will uh, go sort of like this, and then that makes it a little bit easier uh, when you're starting out the ferro shuffle, all right? So again, we'll start, from the, we'll start from the top, all right? Do your split as closely as, as, close as you can get it. All right, do your ferro shuffle, start from the corner with your index finger there, relax everything. Let's see how I sort of went like this. That does make it easier, all right? But don't worry about that. Just for now, do your split, do your tap, put your index finger there, tight grip, move your index finger away, relax everything, sort of move this packet, this top packet right here away from you, and that will get you a weave every single time. Now at first, do not get discouraged because sometimes when you do it, it won't happen to where all the cards weave perfectly. And it's just a matter of just playing with this here right there. I, I missed one card. You can see where that gap is in the middle. All right. So that'll happen more often than not when you start practicing and that's okay. You just got to keep doing it and doing it, doing it until you know how to eliminate those mistakes. It's something I can't really teach you. It's something that you have to just practice over and over and get the right feel for it, right? So it's a, it's a feel thing, right? So I'm just teaching you the mechanics of it and how to hold your hands. And uh, we just have to practice and figure out for yourself is the right amount of pressure that you need to, you know, put on the cards to make them weave. And uh, the rest will just fall into place once you start practicing. Don't give up on this move because I really want you guys to learn these tricks that you can do with the Ferro Shuffle because that is when you really start learning card tricks. So to get a perfect split, 26-26, like I said, when you start to break the pack, your thumbs are here. Now, it's just about estimation, and with practice, uh, you'll get better and better at this estimation, all right? But what does make it easier is with these thumbs sort of both touching and both working in unison, this one moves away and this one moves away at the same time. And most of the time, you can split it perfectly. Now, notice what I'm doing here. Just because I've practiced with, the, with this estimation, as soon as I split, I can tell that this is not a perfect one. And all I have to do now is take one card from this side and that'll be perfect now. So you can sort of correct it when you think it might be wrong. Actually, I think that there's two cards here. So you got, that's perfect right there. So I had to move two cards and you do that before you move away, all right? So when you split and you see that your estimation was off, it's okay to move cards back and forth until you get it right, all right? So I can see now that even if you do the split and you would think it's perfect and you do the tap and you can see when you start to go like this you can see oh crap there's two or three cards that are off you can see that right there what do you do just do that and you start again you know it's not nobody knows what you're doing all right so it's okay to sort of you know fumble around while you're talking and do it until you get it right because you don't want to mess it up if you mess it up and you do the pharaoh shuffle when there's a card or two off there is no coming back from that, all right? So the best thing you want to do is correct yourself before you get, before you wreck yourself. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to try to go for a perfect split here. And uh, I think that is a perfect split. Actually, I think this is 25 and this is 27. So I'm going to move one card from this side over here. And that'll give me a uh, perfect split, 26 and 26. Now, a good way to do the Pharaoh Shuffle to get it perfect every time is this is what you want to keep in mind. You want to perfectly align both bottom cards of both packets, all right? So you do the tap and you want to just align this perfectly so both bottom cards meet perfectly in line and then do the ferro shuffle. So I'll leave you with one trick you can do with a ferro shuffle. It does not have to be a perfect split, a 26-26. It doesn't have to be perfectly interwoven either. All you have to do for this trick to work is that eight cards are inter interwoven perfectly, and that's it.
All right, so a volunteer is asked to just say stop as I drop cards like this. And uh, wow, I'm really in dropping cards like this. <laughs> so they can stop anytime. They look at their card, I won't look. And then I will uh, just put it back somewhere in the middle of the deck and make sure it's really lost in there. So what I can do, sort of estimate where I might think your card is. If you just do me a favor and send it, send it to me with psychic energy, all right? So send me the color. All right, send me the uh, send me the suit. Send me the uh, send me the value. All right, I think I think I have one card in mind. I think it's somewhere maybe in this in this top portion of the deck here. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, try to fish some cards out like this. All right, so you can see that happening right now. Do me a favor as I do this. Just think about your card. Think about your card. Is that it right there? The seven of hearts. <laughs> All right. So the uh, what this is called is actually uh, gymnastic aces by Paul LePaul, and uh, yeah, Paul LePaul. Or I always get Paul LePaul and Arthur Buckley confused. Uh, card magic of LePaul, Arthur Buckley card control. I get those <laughs> confused. <laughs> But I think it's by the Paul. Don't quote me on it though. So normally you would have the aces. I'll just teach you right now with the aces. And so you take the aces out like this. And uh, or if they're already in play and you want to do this with the aces after they're in play, because it's kind of illogical to take the aces out, just put them back in. Anyway, you take the aces and you uh, put them in the pack like this and say, we're gonna try something with the aces like this. And what needs to happen now is you obviously have to control the aces to the top. And a good way to do that with a um, with a uh, multiple uh, shift. <laughs> I don't know what my deal is today. The Vernon uh, multiple shift is where you seem to shuffle the packet and shuffle the aces in. What really happens though is you move this packet up that's above the aces like this. You can see that start to happen right now. You move all those up as you push the aces in flush with that top packet move all this away so you're stripping this packet from the aces. You can see that happening in there as I continue a Hindu shuffle. So now those aces are on top of the deck. And that's a very uh, effective and very, you know, logical way to lose the aces. And a lot of magicians know it. They, they know what to look for when somebody does that. But a layman has never seen that. So it's a very good multiple shift to use for a layman. At speed, it looks really good but like i said you can't fool a magician with it because we've all seen this move done before all right so what speed looks like this the aces go in and the packet gets cut you can throw in a cut like this but we have all of these is back on top now what you're going to do is different than what i just taught you with the pharaoh shuffle normally you would move the top packet back but in this case you're going to move uh the top packet forward in a different way it's, it's it's like a Hindu shuffle, all right? So just do a Hindu shuffle with a little bit of the packet like this, and that's all you need to do, all right? So forget about the breaking of the packet. All you're gonna do is start a Hindu shuffle with, uh, you know, some of the deck. It doesn't matter how many cards it is, just as long as, just as long as it's, you know, over four cards, because the four aces are on top anyway. Do the Hindu shuffle move like this, and all you're gonna do is weave this packet into this bigger packet like this in, somewhere in the middle, all right? So all that needs to happen is those top aces need to be perfectly interwoven into the packet. The rest don't matter. It's just those four aces that you need to go in perfectly, all right? So you've got that. You can see that happening perfectly like that. Now you're good to go for this thing. All you're gonna do is push these in a, maybe a little more than half, all right? So a little more than half of the card is sticking out. And you're gonna take it like this with your fingers below them on top of the near end. And you're just gonna shake it. You're just gonna, with some force, just move the deck down like this and those top aces will just fly out like this every time. It's, it's so neat to do. It's just a matter of uh, the right pressure that you need to squeeze the cards and the right amount of force to shake the packet. And uh, just like anything else, it just takes practice, all right? So. Again, we are here, and all I'm gonna do again is squeeze the packet and just give them a shake. We have one, two, three, four aces, and they just go everywhere, all right? So it doesn't really matter where they go, but I would suggest doing this so they sort of shoot out onto the table, all right? But with aces, uh, you don't have to do it with aces, you can just do it with one card that somebody picked. All right, so we'll do it with the ace of clubs for now. And I gotta do is, you know, do the estimation thing that I was doing in the, in the performance and doing the mind reading bit. And now all you're gonna do is say, think about your card. 
and then it just shoots out. And then uh, it's better if you do it like on a big table and they're on the other side and they're there to catch it. So that way, you know, it's a better reveal. Anyway, that's all I got for the Pharaoh Shuffle today. I uh, hope you learn it and use it. And I will come back in maybe a month or so when you've perfected it. And I'll teach you a trick you can do with the Pharaoh Shuffle that, uh, you know, is better than this one. All right, guys, so as always, thank you so much for watching this video. It means the world to me. And if you got some value out of it, if you learned something new, if these tips help you with your Pharaoh Shuffle, you give me a like and, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, happy practicing. I love you guys.